I'm Peter Block in Orlando, Florida at the ACC annual meeting for On the Scene, and with me is Ron Victor. Ron is the media darling of this meeting uh, because he has a trial called Hypertension in Black Barbershops, and if you don't think that that doesn't cause media attention, you're wrong. So, Ron, uh, tell me about the trial. We've gone over this before. So give, give me the short version, and then we'll talk about what it means. Sure. So, Peter, you know, as you know, non-Hispanic black men have the highest hypertension-related death rate in the United States. And black men have less physician interaction than black women. Uh, men more than women, you know, it's, it's true for all men. I'm guilty as charged. And so hypertension treatment and control rates are lower in black men than black women, and that's the need for community outreach. So barber sh health outreach to barbershops is well established in the lay press across the country, but you know, can it really um, improve blood pressure control in a meaningful way? Well, I'm going to interrupt and say you've done this trial before in a different way. Yeah, so we did the trial 10 years ago in Dallas, Texas, and we had barbers promote health and check blood pressure, and we had a, we had a marginally positive result. Um, the blood pressure fell by 2.5 over 0.9 millimeters of mercury, and I was ready to cry. So um, it turned out that, so this time what we did was um, we added pharmacists. And why do we add pharmacists? Because um, what we found in the, in the previous trial when we did a post hoc analysis is that the medication regimens by the community clinicians were rarely intensified. And that's a common problem with shared responsibility between doctors, patients, and the health systems we work in. There's no one person to blame for that. Um, so we cut to the chase and we figure, well, there have been 40 trials that show that pharmacists' um, actions can improve hypertension control um, in, in lower blood pressure by about seven millimeters of mercury compared to usual care. And so, we, but that's in traditional healthcare settings where there are few black men. So we combined the barbershop health promotion with pharmacist-based rigorous care and had the pharmacist bring the care directly to the barbershops. And I'll point out that these pharmacists were in the barbershop. Yeah, and they, they actually did the blood pressures and they checked blood and they checked electrolytes, made sure the creatinines were up, and then they changed the medication as that's well. That's right, they did all that in the barbershop. Um, and so these are, these are specially trained doctoral level pharmacists that then had extra special training by me and the other hypertension specialist on, on the trial. Um, and they were certified by the American Society of Hypertension. And so they made house calls to the barbershop on average seven visits per, per patron in six months. And just as you said, they electronically prescribed, they checked blood pressure. They had this finger stick handheld device to get a creatinine and, and, and blood electrolytes. And then after the visit, they would send a progress note within 24 hours to each man's doctor, and the doctor could override them if they wanted to, but they rarely did. Yeah, and in fact, you, as I remember from the trial, uh, the people that were in the treatment group got more medication than people that were sent back to their PCPs. A lot more. Yeah. They got, they, on average, they got two more drug classes per person, and, and, and then instead of hydrocorathiza, they got long-acting endapamide. Yeah. In, instead of short-acting benazapril, they got long-acting herbosartan and amlodipine. So, all that made a difference. Tell me about the difference in systolic and diastolic blood pressures, because it's striking. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> so, so the blood pressure started. So the overall, the, the home run was that the intervention effect, the, the change scores in the two groups, the blood pressure fell by 21.6 over 14.9 millimeters of mercury more in the active intervention group than the control group. And so the blood pressure started in the in the intervention group at about 153. Um, systolic and fell uh, to 126. Which is inside the guidelines, isn't it? Or it we, pretty close. So we got, we got um, so 130 over 80 being the new guidelines to get below that. Right. 64% um, uh, of the intervention group got below that, got to that, that goal, um, whereas only 11 or 12% of the control group. Okay, so very quickly, Ron, since we're running out of time, what's the next step? What's, what do we do about this? Yeah, so the the next step is, is to try to take this on the road and, in, and try to use our approach and implement it broadly. So um, we're going to be applying for, for additional funding uh, to do this in other cities. Um, in, in order to, to expand this and make it portable, we need to broaden the inclusion criteria. Um, at the time this study came down the pike, JNCA had just about to come out and we knew they were going to relax the guidelines. 
So we wanted to make sure we had real hypertension. So this was man-eating hypertension with blood pressures of you know 155 over 90s, where anyone would say they needed to be treated. So we excluded a lot of men with blood pressures that were in the 130s. To get in the trial, you had to be 140 systolic after multiple readings on two different days. So lower blood people could benefit from a touch of medicine. And with the new guidelines, all we have to do is add on a finger stick to get fractionated lipids and we can calculate a risk score. Exactly. And we want to add lipid management along with this because of the HOPE 3 trial and the ASCOT trial that showed that if you treat blood pressure and lipids at this, you know, with a little bit of a statin, you get added to benefits and risk reduction. Of course. And so that's what, that's what we're up to. Well, you got lots of things to do, and this is all good for the general public, and I congratulate you on a great trial. You are indeed a media darling. I'm delighted you're here to talk about the trial. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Peter.